I'm here today with author Sal Perricone, who's writing a book right now on a dramatic event in New Orleans history. Sal, welcome to the show. Thank you, Charlie. So Sal, in 1890, the police chief in New Orleans gets assassinated. October 15th, 1890, at about 11 p.m., he's walking home to his house on Gerard Street, and he was shot by about five men, and subsequently died the next morning at Charity Hospital. And the mayor responds by arresting over 200 Sicilians? Yeah, he appointed uh, a committee of 50 prominent citizens to conduct an extrajudicial investigation of their shooting. The police played a subordinate role in the investigation, and they arrested about 200 Sicilians. In December, they indicted 19 of them. They go to trial, and they're basically acquitted or hung juries. Mm -hmm. Nine of the 19 went to trial, six were found not guilty, and three the jury could not reach a verdict on. And the next day, a mob breaks into the jail? Yeah, the judge, the trial judge, Joshua Baker, remanded him back to Parish Prison for proceedings to occur on the following Monday. And the next day, there was a mass meeting on Canal Street. The mob was led by attorneys, and they had their select assassins, handed rifles to them, and they marched on the Parish Prison. And there's no police that stop them, there's no police that shoot them as they're trying to break into this no, prison? Nope. No, matter of the, fact, there was a police station built into the prison. The old 4th Precinct police station was part of the prison. The sheriff's deputies didn't stop them. They put up tepid resistance, but they broke in the prison and, and shot, beat, and hung 11 Italians. So really, Mayor Shakespeare and other officials in New Orleans were pretty much complacent in letting this happen. They're complacent and complicit. and. Uh, and that's what the mayor recognized in their, in their proclamation. Uh, it, yeah, they just let it happen. This led to actually a, a war almost between Italy and the United States. Yeah, Italy recalled its ambassador uh, and told uh, the president, Benjamin Harrison, that they were going to blockade the mouth of the Mississippi River. Reparations were made? The president, Harrison, instructed the U.S. attorney here in New Orleans to conduct an investigation of the district attorney's case. And when it reported back that the district attorney didn't have a case, the United States government paid the family's reparations. Then New York actually got involved. They yes. built a statue. Yeah, they built the Columbus statue by Central Park. And then 128 years later, they get involved again. They get involved again and led to the effort to get this proclamation done uh, by Mayor Cantrell. And that was Mike Santo reaching out to you. Uh, Mike Santo, the, the city of New Orleans, particularly the Italian community, oh, Mike Santo and the sons and daughters of Italy, a debt of gratitude. After Michael reaches out and he says the sons of Italy out of New York would like to get more resolution on this, Mayor Cantrell decides, yes, I'll step up to the plate and, and issue a proclamation. After she was presented with the evidence, she said, OK, I'll do it. She is the 21st mayor of New Orleans since the lynchings. And she's the first mayor who stood up, took the initiative initiative, the Italian community, both in New York and here in New Orleans, owe her a debt of gratitude. And I have here a copy of the resolution she executed that day. Mayor Cantrell showed a lot of courage. She did. Magnificent courage in doing this. She didn't have to do this. And, and actually, there was a lot of pressure on her not to do it. Yeah, there was, but she thought it was the right thing to do, as she said in her speech uh, that day. This is the right thing to do. I will always remember those words. What happened to those 11 Italians it was wrong, and the city owes them and their descendants a formal apology. Some people didn't want me to make this apology today. But if you know me, I'm always going to have the courage to stand up what, what I know is the right thing to do in spite of. So I stand here with you today, and I issue this formal apology for ugliness, that is 128 years old. We cannot change history, but we can acknowledge it and we can grow from it. So I wanna say thank you to our Italian American community who has made New Orleans what she is today. It's a fact, it's a fact. For your contributions to the culture and economy, our landscape of our city, and of course our country. We cannot deny that. As Santos group arrives, there's a, a dinner, like almost a way for people to get to know each other. Because yes. a lot of people didn't really know each other. Oh. And people came in from around the country. They came in from California, they came in from New York, came in from Pennsylvania. We always thought this was a kind of parochial, insular event. It's not. It's not today and it wasn't then. The people who came from around the country manifest that. There was another group that came in, a husband and wife from Houston. Yes. And I'm with Damon Palermo from Houston? That's right. So you guys drove in from Houston. That's right. And, you, and last night was a dinner. Oh, we really enjoyed it. I think it really showed the broad 
attraction of, of what this solemn event meant to so many Sicilian Americans, Italian Americans across the US. Tell me about today. You know, it was amazing with the proclamation by the mayor. It was a huge step forward in, in terms of acknowledging this tremendous uh, tragedy that really reverberated across the country. And I think it was a wonderful step forward in closing this chapter. We were on the precipice of having this historic tragedy slip into oblivion. There was one woman who, who actually found out about it on Tuesday mm -hmm. and arrived Thursday to come to the dinner and yeah. come to the event Friday. She was from Los Angeles. And I'm with Mariana Gatto from the Italian American Museum in Los Angeles. Mariana, welcome to the nice show. Nice to meet you. So fill me in. You came in from Los Angeles for the last two days. How has it been? It's been a great experience, kind of a whirlwind, but um, this is uh, such an important event. And um, it seems like being here was uh, just in order. How did you feel about today? You know, today was a very special event, obviously. I think it's so relevant to our times. And as a historian, I'm, you know, quite pleased that we're, we're talking about this finally. You know, many Italian Americans aren't aware of this event that, you know, has impacted a lot of their identity. It's very encouraging. The people got to speak that had come in from New York and the consulate and even France. He had a magnificent panel there, so to speak. Everyone spoke about the event and what the significance it was to them and their group. Frank Maselli, the honorary consulate mm -hmm. in New Orleans, I felt like he gave a great closing. And now we can actually close the chapter. We can move on now. The chapter's closed. We can't forget it. And I just hope the people in New Orleans recognize the contribution that many Italians made to this city. Not only New Orleans moving on, but the fact that Italian radio broadcasted, mm -hmm. that it seems like Italy also is able to move on too, because yeah. we didn't realize that this is still, many people are still aware of this. People in Italy are aware of what happened here. And they still, particularly Sicily, they remember, they know about what happened here in New Orleans. So it's a great feeling of what Mayor Cantrell did. She did one great act of diplomacy that no mayor has ever done before her.